Well, it is my great pleasure, as usual, to invite to the podium to share with you inspiration for the week. But on this occasion, it's inspiration and preparation for a wonderful, fantastic new year. Let us invite our beloved pastor, Reverend John Scott, to the podium. Thank you. Wow, good morning, family. Happy New Year and Happy New You. you. Will you say to your neighbor, Happy New Year, Happy New You? Happy, happy New Year, year happy, happy New You. This, this spiritual family, when you tell them, say to them neighbor, them talk to everybody, all up in Hope Pastures and down in Swallowfield. So I just a joy to welcome you to our hearts, to my heart, and to our beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And we also welcome those who join us in consciousness by listening to us and watching us on the World Wide Web. You know, there was a man who worked for the post office. Yes, they still have snail mail. And his job was to process all the mail that had illegible addresses, you know, addresses that couldn't be read. One day, a letter came addressed in a shaky handwriting to God, and it had no address. It had the return address of the person writing, but it didn't have God's address. So the post office worker thought he should open it to see what it was all about. The letter read, and I quote, Dear God, I'm an 83-year-old widow living on a very small pension. Yesterday, someone stole my purse. It had $100 in it, which was all the money I had until my next pension check. Next Sunday is Christmas, and I had invited two of my friends over for dinner. Without the money, I have nothing to buy food with. I have no family to turn to, and you are my only hope. Can you please help me? Sincerely, Edna. The postal worker was touched, as you may well imagine. He showed the letter to all the other uh, post office workers, and each one dug into his or her wallet and came up with a few dollars. By the time he made the rounds, he had collected nine to six dollars, which they lovingly put into an envelope and sent to the woman. The rest of the day, all the workers felt a nice warm glow, thinking of how Edna and the dinner she would be able to share with her friends. So Christmas came and went, as it has for us all here. A few days later, another letter came from the same old lady to God. All the workers gathered around, as you can imagine, quite excited while the letter was opened. It read, Dear God, how can I ever thank you enough for what you did for me? Because of your gift of love, I was able to fix a glorious dinner for my friends. We had a very nice day, and I told my friends of your wonderful gift. By the way, there was four dollars missing. I think it must be those thieving bastards at the post office. I'm sure God understands, and so do we. My sister in love, as I call my brother's widow, sent me that joke on Christmas Day, and I immediately wrote it in my journal. So my journal for 2019 begins with a joke. You see, friends, journaling doesn't have to be only about lofty thoughts or spiritual inspirations. I know many people think, no, you know, I have enough of that when I come on a Sunday to church. But you can use your, your journal, to, and I use mine, to record ribald anecdotes and some jokes that I cannot repeat from the pulpit. And, Stuff to cheer me up. So my, my journal for 2019 starts with that joke. It also has in it Reverend Michael Records' wonderful poem, which he wrote for New Year's Eve, but I'll share that with you later. You can use a journal to document your daily life, to record ideas and insights, to discover and explore what is important to you, such as your values and your life's dreams, and the meaning and insight you get from them. 
I also utilize my journal to record and celebrate my wins. You know, sometimes if I manage to go twice to yoga, then I know that I've, it's is a triumph and I celebrate it, usually with a piece of cake or pudding. <laughs> but you can celebrate your wins and, and be good to yourself this year. And if you have set yourself intentions to do or to be or to not do or not be something and you succeed on a daily basis, you can celebrate it in your journal. Most of all, I use my journal to express my gratitude for all the good that is mine on a daily basis. So I t tell my students at the, in the Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program at the, the prison in Kingston that I wake up in the mornings and I make up my bed and then I meditate and then I make up my mind what kind of day I wish to have. And my journal is used as a way of just pinpointing uh, keeping my feet in that direction. So if you already keep a journal, you know the gift that you are giving yourself. And if you do not, our thriving ministry quadrant, is it the community quadrant? Yes. Um, working on journaling journeys this year is inviting you to give journaling a try. Journaling is really a powerful spiritual practice that will provide you with an opportunity to capture the inner experience of your 2019 journey. The simple practice of writing your thoughts daily will facilitate your inner growth and allow you to realize its direct impact on your outer world. Now, your journal doesn't have to be an expensive leather-bound tome. For years, I have used one of those composition books that you buy at the bookstore or at the supermarket. They cost $115. And I personalize it by putting a picture, my, my picture on it. This year, I said, I had a quote, there are years that ask questions and years that answer. It's a quote from Zora Neale Hurston. And at the bottom, I put 2019, a year of answers. So, you personalize it, you can write in it anything that, that, that makes you, re that resonates with you and that calls to your heart and to your spirit and to your soul. Thanks to the Community Building Quadrant, which is chaired by Phaedra Saunders, we have approximately 75 journals, which will be shared on a first-come, first-served basis in our book room after service. And I wanted to give you just six things that you could perhaps consider putting in your journal. Six elements, six important elements that you might use. The first is to use it as a daily log, where you, you note important events, what happened, the people involved, and most important, your feelings and inner experiences of your day. The second uh, element is to capture your wins. As I've said, congratulate yourself on any successes you have had. The third is to use it as a gratitude log, and this is very important. To record on a daily basis, I always say at least five things that you are grateful for. And people often ask me, well, can you repeat? Yes, if I was grateful for my good health yesterday, I, may, I can write it again today. I'm grateful for my good health. But when you practice writing what you're grateful for and you start writing, you'll find that you will go 10, 20, 30. Sometimes I fill up two or three or four pages with just stuff that I'm grateful for. And it's, it's, you know, one of the kids that came up this morning and just hugged me or high-fived me. That goes into my gratitude journal. Thank God, you know, for these children that, that put their hands in my heart and make my life um, a light and a love light. So, Gratitude is a very important aspect, and you need to record it. I know we all feel it, but it, it changes the energy for you when you write it down. And somebody once said, W-R-I-T-I-N-G is really R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. Writing is writing. It puts things straight in your consciousness, in your mind. The fourth element uh, I wanted to share with you is writing your insights in sites, inside sites, things that, that come to you. Um, and here you can make a note of anything gained during meditation or reading Science of Mind magazine or other spiritual literature or listening to my encouragements on a Sunday. Starting today, we're going to allow a few moments of reflection following the message each week in which we invite you to journal 
your insights. And there is also a, 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 the inside back cover of your program, which has space for insights. Um, so it's just, you know, sometimes you, something touches you during the message, and you feel good about it. And by the time you've had your coffee and you've gone home, whoops, gone. But if you capture it, it will stay with you and color your week and your experience all, all week long. So that is going to be one of the things that we are, uh, changes that we're making. The fifth element in your journal is dialogue. And this is not dialogue with some god out there in the clouds that's sitting with a, a long white beard and listening to you. That God's journal of which we sung in Stevie's wonderful chant this morning, just life eternal in God's journal. You are writing that journal every day by how you live your life. And I want us to make 2019 a living prayer so that tomorrow evening when we meet for our workshop, we are going to actually be writing our, our goals for the year in the form of a spiritual mind treatment. And we're going to make our life a living prayer. Can, I say, uh, can we say together, my life is a living prayer this year? My life is a living prayer this year. In 2019, all good is mine because I'm divine. In 2019, all good is mine because I'm, I'm not convinced. Let me hear it again. In 2019, all good is mine because I'm divine. Wonderful. Now here's the big frog, friends. After dialoguing with yourself, and that's a wonderful way to just deepen your, your connection with your higher self, and generating this inner dialogue with, with that part of you that knows, with your higher self, your God self. Your conscious self conversing with your inner self will help you with your spiritual growth and guide you in your decision making right through the year. But there is a sixth and final element that I want to share with you. And this really, in my experience as a minister and a practitioner of this great teaching, has been one of the big blocks that prevent people from experiencing the good that they desire and that they come here and write every year. And that block is unforgiveness. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of forgiveness and of journaling forgiveness. Because it has a direct bearing on your goals for 2019. The goals which you will energize with prayer tomorrow evening at our workshop. So I'm talking about the F word. And my journal is full of the F word. Forgive, 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 forgive. Sometimes it's the person that most needs forgiveness is yourself. You know that? Sometimes I have to forgive myself for being angry because somebody a taxi man, bad drive me. You know, I just have to work on myself. So the master teacher emphasizes the importance of forgiveness in Matthew 5, 23 and 24, when he says, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remember that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. And this is so important because the gift that is being talked about there is your gift to life. And if you have in your heart unforgiveness and resentment and hurt and you've been carrying it for a long time, it makes your gift to life a hollow gift. You cannot live life to its fullest and touch the infinite deep within your very soul if you are still carrying unforgiveness in, in the depths of your heart, in the depths of your soul. Let us say together, I fully, completely forgive myself and every other self. I fully and completely forgive myself and every other self. The power of divine love now dissolves all hurts and resentment. The power of divine love now dissolves all hurts and resentment. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. So that's your assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it. 
is to spend some quiet time today and think about anyone or anything that needs your forgiveness. Anyone or anything that has hurt you and that may be blocking you from that union with the highest energy that there is, the energy of divine love. Write down that person's name or that situation and write underneath it, I fully and freely forgive. Go free. I fully and freely forgive. Go free. Behold, what? I make all things new. There's a story of two brothers who lived side by side in their own farms for many years. Until one day, a foolish argument caused a rift between them. How many of you have had that kind of foolish argument? When you think back to what started this huge rift where you're not talking to them on your side of the family, not talking to their side of the family, and your friends can't invite you to their party because they're going to book up. You ever, you ever seen it happening? These two brothers lived harmoniously, their two farms beside each other, and some silly argument caused this rift. And all of their 50 years, they had lived harmoniously until that day. They had worked their fields together, they had shared knowledge and produce, and lent a helping hand to one another in times of need. But the fight began over that small misunderstanding, which can sometimes happen, and the dispute dragged on and became an angry exchange of words, followed by that deafening silence. And you know, the longer you keep it up, the harder it is to, to heal the breach, eh? And one day, there was a knock on the, on the older brother's door. And when he opened it, he was facing an old bearded carpenter holding a toolbox. I could show you some work, sir, said the stranger. Do you need any repairs in your farm? Yes, hissed the brother. I have a job for you. Across the creek, there's a farm that happens to belong to my younger brother. Until recently, the whole area between our homes was green. But then he changed the creek's path, making it into a border between us. I'm sure he did that for spite. But I'll show him, said the older brother. You see those trees by the barn? I want you to turn them into a 10-foot tall fence, because I never want to see his face again. The old carpenter thought quietly to himself for a few minutes and eventually said, I see. The farmer helped the carpenter carry his tools and the wood and then drove off to the city on some errands. When he came back in the evening, the old carpenter had finished. Upon arriving at the creek, the older brother was stunned. His eyes were bulging out on stalks and he couldn't utter a single word. Where a fence should have been standing, a bridge now stood. A quaint and special bridge, truly a work of art, with an intricately carved banister. At the same time, the younger brother happened to come to the same spot. He rushed over the bridge and embraced his older brother and said, you're something special, building a bridge. After all I've said and done, and while both brothers were hugging, the old carpenter collected his tools, piled them back into the toolbox, and started walking away. The brothers turned to him and said, please stay for a while and a few more days. We have more things that need fixing. I would have loved to stay, kind sirs, said the carpenter, but I have many more bridges to build and things to fix in other places. The moral of the story, my friends, is a simple one. We often let anger push us away from our loved ones and allow pride to come between our love and before our love. Our egos get in the way. Don't let it happen to you. Learn to forgive and to build those bridges. The December issue of the Science of Mind magazine featured several articles on forgiveness, and the reading for December 15 by Dr. John Waterhouse quotes Science of Mind founder Dr. Ernest Holmes as saying, quote, forgiveness means reconciliation 
in spite of estrangement. It means reunion despite hostility. It means acceptance of those who have been unacceptable. It means reception of those who are rejected." Unquote. Waterhouse recommends that before going to sleep every night, you ask yourself, have I found fault in anyone for anything today? And if the answer is yes, you think about how you can let it go and welcome that one back into your heart and then forgive yourself for the judgment. And I'm saying, then write it in your journal. I fully and freely forgive. Go free. Behold, I make all things new. That's how we build a future. That's how we build a bridge to the future. And I'd like to, to close with something that really touched my heart and that inspired me. It is a poem written by our own Reverend Michael Record for our New Year's Eve service. And if you weren't here on New Year's Eve, you really missed the world premiere of this wonderful poem. But I'm going to, with his permission, share it with you now. It's titled, My Future. Been thinking about my future, that rosy far off time when all woes will have ended and only good is mine. Been dreaming of how happy life will be for me as blessings rain from heaven to earth abundantly. My family will be wealthy, my country full of fun. No child shall die of hunger, no adult by the gun. The traffic will move smoothly, storms will take place at sea, all earthquakes will be minor, volcanoes lava free. Diseases have surrendered to science's mighty mind. The wars all terminated, hate's gone from humankind. Our thoughts are from the higher self. Our words flow syrup sweet. Our actions beneficial to our brothers on the street. For that distant time I'm praying, except within somehow a still small voice is saying, your future starts right now. Robert Michael Record. My friends, remember the past cannot be changed. But you don't have to bring the pain with you into the present. You can make all things new because the future can be changed. You're creating the future right now. No quarrel should spoil a true connection from heart to heart. And you know what happens sometimes when I am hurt by someone I love, and it's usually the people that you love deepest that can hurt you the most, right? Sometimes I think, look at all these years that we have had, um, that we have related, that our souls have been connected. Am I going to let this one incident obliterate and spoil and put a blot on all of those years of love that we have shared, and then it puts it in perspective for me. And I then can build that bridge from my heart to theirs and forgive. And so, make journaling a regular spiritual practice this year and let, allow it to be your bridge from anger and resentment to fulfillment, satisfaction, and joy. My prayer for each of you is that this year you build bridges from your heart to others and to your fondest dreams and cross each bridge with a smile and a prayer of gratitude on your lips. God loves you and so do I. Namaste.